In this video, I want to talk about the concept of conditional probability when we're talking about continuous random variables. So the example which I'm going to speak about here is the example whereby we've got a probability density which is defined across the height of individuals and the weight of individuals. And the PDF here might look something like some sort of cone shape here, which might be sort of represented by this sort of shape which I'm trying to draw here in three dimensions in sort of mode. And let's say we were interested in finding out what is the probability that the height is less than or equal to, let's say, 1.5 meters, given that an individual's weight is less than or equal to 50 kilograms. So how could we go about thinking about this? Well, what we could do is we could use our formula, which means that the numerator of our formula is the probability that the height is less than or equal to 1.5 meters, and the weight is less than or equal to 50 kilograms. And then we need to divide through by the marginal probability that weight is less than or equal to 50 kilograms. So we can use our sort of contour interpretation of this PDF to help us to work out the marginal probability as we did before. So what we can do here is we can draw across weight and height. We can draw the contour lines which correspond to a particular contour on our PDF above. And we spoke about before how the weight and height of individuals is likely to be quite correlated. So the PDF might look something, or the contour lines for this PDF might look something like these lines which I'm drawing here. And we spoke about before, what we can then do is we can kind of slice through this three or this two dimensional contour plot and we could sort of measure the length of each of these lines, take into account that actually what we're doing is we're going up and then down across our three-dimensional image. And then what we do then is we can sort of sum together all of these cases, which is equivalent to integrating across height, and then that gives us the marginal probability of a certain weight, or the PDF across a certain weight, I should say slightly more correctly. So then when we do that, we get a figure which looks something like this. Then what we can do is we can work out the denominator here by just working out the probability that weight is less than 50 kilograms, which is equivalent to working out the area to the left of, if I use a slightly different color, the area to the left of this line here, where this sort of point on the axis here corresponds to 50 kilograms. So the denominator here might be something like, for example, 0 0.4, just looking at our particular diagram which we've drawn here, even though I haven't indicated any sort of points on the axis, I should say, but you can imagine it might be something like 0 0.4. Then the next thing is to work out the joint probability, which is represented by this numerator here. So how do we go about doing that? Well, that's pretty similar. All we need to do here is we need to mark off on our sort of contour plot the 50 kilograms mark, and we also need to work mark off on our diagram the 1.5 meters mark. So then what we can do is we could sort of go across in our particular contour and we could work out essentially the volume which is contained within this particular square here. So if we worked out the volume of that, which is equivalent to working out the volume in a sort of shape, which is sort of cut off as I've tried to indicate here. So it's all the sort of volume underneath this particular sort of tent shape here. And that would tell us the joint probability of the height being less than 1.5 meters and the weight being less than 50 kilograms. And we can imagine that that might be something like 0 0.25. It's certainly going to be less than 0 0.4 because 0 0.4 corresponds to all the points which are left of this line, which also contains this area above, which I'm going to now color in red, which we're not now considering for the joint probability. So it's obviously going to be less than 0 0.4. And this, if we sort of work it out, would be 5 eighths. Okay, so that's one way of thinking about it using our sort of formula and using our contour plot. Another way of thinking about this is essentially to say that what we're doing is, if we look at this image or the, this sort of 3D image of the PDF is, what we're doing is we're throwing away all points or all sort of volume, which is to the right of this particular mark here on the weight axis, which corresponds to 50 kilograms. So all of this area now in red is thrown away. And then what we need to do is, because probabilities have to add up to one, we then need to sort of shift everything upwards such that the new volume, which doesn't contain this area in red, now has a probability which integrates to one. So the volume now has to integrate to one. 
If we do that, then if I do this in a different colour, then the whole shape shifts up and we might get something which looks like this blue line, but the blue line is still going to stop at this sort of red mark here. But then what we could do is we could kind of just work out the volume in our sort of new, in terms of our new PDF, which corresponded to the area beneath the blue line, or beneath the blue sort of sheet, if you will, which corresponded to weight being less than 50 kilograms and height being less than 1.5 meters. So we would again go out on this sort of axis here, and then we'd have to work out the area under our sort of new blue sheet, which might correspond to that which I'm drawing on now. And either way, we would get the same answer because actually the renormalization factor, the amount which we'd actually need to shift this shape up, we already know what it is. It's one over 0 0.4. In other words, it's two and a half. So we could just work it out by working out our original sort of integral and then multiplying it all by two and a half. So just to be clear, the sort of original thing actually corresponds to this sort of volume which I've indicated here on this contour plot. And we've said that this might be something like 0 0.25. And then all we need to do is we need to multiply that by the sort of renormalization factor, the amount which we've shifted up our sort of purple line, which we know is 2.5. And if we do that, this will also give the same answer. So it will also give an answer of 5.8 in this particular example.